Easy now, folks. I'm going to show you two, no, three tanks that I ended up making lids for. The first being for this corner tank, which actually got free. The guy was trying to sell it for ages. Eventually said, if you buy the light office for 20 quid, you can take the tank. So I took it. I actually only had it set up for a couple of weeks until I donated it for you to a young lady that was having a bit of a torrid time and needed a bigger tank for some of her fish. But before that, I had to fix it up a wee bit. I had to put handles on it and put a lid on it because this is the way it came a wee bit of a lid on the left hand side and the light just sitting on the top so obviously needed some work if i was going to build a lid on top i was worried about moisture getting up into that top sections particularly because i don't think that light is waterproof so ran to the nearest hardware store and got some of this polycarbonate sheeting as you can see it's double layered held together by sections between the two sides so this was going to be my condensation tray and you can probably tell where i'm going to go with this just a case of measuring the gap that i wanted it to fit in and i knew that if i did it from side to side exactly the size i could balance it on the two front and back sections so mark it out on the board and then obviously go to town with, with the old Stanley blade I did actually figure out eventually it was better to cut this with a large set of sharp uh, scissors but obviously Stanley blade is fine if you've got a sharp one just be careful with your fingers always cut away from your body as well of course I do apologize by the way for being a little bit breathy in this video just getting over a severe case of the man the man flu anyway as you can see, that is going to work perfect, slot into place and prevent any condensation getting up into the lid section and penetrating into the light, which is what we were trying to avoid. Easy enough to push it back for feeding and slip it out when we want to do our maintenance. To finish off the lid then, I wanted to match the section that was already in place, so I got some 18mm MDF, but it's kind of an awkward, well for me anyway, an awkward shape to cut so I ended up making a template out of cardboard first and I had to add that section along the middle there because at first I forgot there is a bit of a lip around the edge of the tank so that's a prime example of measure twice cut once isn't it I could have made a horrible mistake had I not double checked my work before chopping into the wood once I was happy with that though I could use my template to lay on top of the MDF and mark out my corners I had thought about sticking it, sticking the cardboard down and using that to cut along, but the cardboard isn't really straight edge, any kind of a straight edge at all. So getting the straight rule out and joining up the dots seemed to be the way ahead. I will say I'm not particularly handy, particularly skillful at stuff like this, and I was kind of making out as I go along, which is one of the reasons I thought I'd quite like to share it with somebody else who <laughs> might be in the same boat kind of thing. That applies to the measuring out and the cutting. You'll see in a minute some of my edges weren't completely neat, completely smooth and straight. So if you've got a jigsaw or a bandsaw, that might be the way to go, but I didn't have either of those things. Just needed to do the best I could with my saw and my clumsy skills. I wasn't too bothered, to be honest with you, as I thought I was keeping the tank for myself at the time, but had I known I was giving it on to somebody else, I might have been a little bit more careful. But didn't take too long. Five minutes to chop the wood and then it was on to the next stage. Quick check first just to make sure it was going okay. And this is where I say you could see the edges aren't completely straight. There is some light coming through so could be a case of just sanding those off. I did think at one point about adding a couple of hinges but it's a heavy lid and I wouldn't like to think of that falling on somebody's fingers. I had to paint it next to make sure that it was the same as the rest of the cabinet. And once that was done, I was really happy with the job. Reasonably happy with the job. However, like I said, I did end up giving the tank on. So, yeah, it is what it is, eh? I had taken the time, in fact, before we move on to paint the inside of the cabinet with black ball paint. Because I just thought that looked more pleasing, better to the eye if it was all in black. And that's where you can see the other wee sneaky tank guy down there, just for growing up a, growing out a few snails. And... The other lid that I made, well, another lid that I made out of the polycarbonate. Just a case of cutting it to the exact shape 
uh, taken off a wee bit in the corners for the airline to go through and uh, heat a wire, and that's it. The lids these tanks come with tend to have large cutouts, which lead to more evaporation and heat escape. So this was a better idea, I think. On to the last one then, this 4 foot 150 litre tank, which I did the same thing for. Cut the polycarbonate to the exact size and shape, and then had to take wee bits out of it for the cent uh, corner supports, really. Uh, the air lines and the, the wires. Although I did rush it again, it was very late at night, and this end is horrible. Luckily I've still got a bit left, so I could maybe do it again. That's one of the things with this polycarbonate sheeting, though. Not that I'm advocating being wasteful at all, but you can play about with it a wee bit if you want to. So remember these plant root holders I got from Sheen a few weeks ago? I decided I was going to cut a hole for one of these. I figured it would be best to have it in position underneath the sheeting and then mark off with tape where I was going to make my cuts, which is what I did. Flipped it around to make it easier to get access to and this is the stage that I found out, figured out it was easier to use the scissors. Bit late, better late than ever, so they say. We, at least we know that going forward though. To get the flap off, I had to use the knife though. Pushed it up and down a couple of times to weaken it and then grabbed the Stanley. Maybe you guys can think of a better way of doing that. If so, that's fine. Be happy for anybody to kind of improve on what I've done here. And if so, maybe share it in the comments below to help everybody out. That is what this is all about at the end of the day, isn't it? Just a case of removing the tape then and sticking our piece, Lily. This is into the wee holder. They're a bit dried out just now, but I think that's gonna look great once it starts going, and of course soak out loads of nitrates from our water. Perfect. There was one thing I wasn't totally happy with, and that's the light shining right in my eyes from my sitting angle at this tank. However, a few bit of black plumber's tape easily solved that. Just ran it half along the light, half along the lid. That blocks out the glare from that small gap between the lid and the light and also means that I've held my light in place <laughs> so when I want to lift that up for feeding the light doesn't slide down the back of the tank which <laughs> has happened in the past of course you'll need to make sure that your light isn't one that is going to get particularly warm or hot even but this wee high light doesn't at all for that matter no matter how long it's on it's only touch warm at the very very most there you go anyway a couple of ideas on how to fix or build lids for aquariums if you need to like i said chuck ideas around each other in the comments below if you think you've got a better solution or some additional ideas and i would encourage you to check out a video by aquarium delirium who does a much more professional and much neater job than i have of doing this i will link his video in the description down below otherwise i'm out later 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 later